I have worked with hundreds of freelance clients over the years of growing my six-figure copywriting business. I've also helped other freelancers grow to this sweet spot where you don't have to be glued to your desk all the time to run a successful online business like this. One of the key pillars of growing your business to this spot is setting up systems that help you work smarter instead of harder. I'm talking about maximizing efficiency for you and optimizing the client experience for them. Really, you can't go wrong because it is totally a win-win. One of the places that I like to start is with the onboarding workflows. So in this video, I'm actually gonna walk you through an onboarding checklist. These are the must-haves that you need in your onboarding process in order to minimize the non-billable hours while maximizing the sales, therefore the revenue that you can bring in from this part of your workflow. Get ready to take notes because there is a lot of ground that we are going to cover in a very short time. If you don't know me, hey, I'm Jill Wise, a conversion copywriter, brand and marketing strategist, and business coach. And through both my Den For You studio and education platform, I've worked with, coached, and taught literally hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you how to make good money online. And like I mentioned, systems and processes are a huge piece of that puzzle. So let's get into the onboarding checklist of all of the must-haves that you need if you want to make this process way more efficient for yourself and feel really good for your clients. The first onboarding process must-have is pretty obvious, but I need to mention it here, and that is a lead inquiry autoresponder. So I don't want you to have leads that are just sitting in your inbox and not getting a reply from you for days. There is nothing worse than somebody who's reaching out and they want an answer than just having them sit there in limbo. At the same time, I practice email boundaries and I want you to be able to do the same. You don't need to be glued to your inbox. So that's where an autoresponder comes in. Now, you don't want to do this generic like everybody else does, saying, hey, I just got your email, great, I'll get back to you. Instead, I like to optimize this lead autoresponder as a part of your sales pipeline. This is a great place to make an on-brand experience, to follow up from information that they would see on your website, and just continue that buying journey into your world and show them what it's like to work with you. It's a really simple step that will make a huge difference. This is also a place where I like to add in things like services guides or sending a little bit more information about your packages and processes if that information isn't already on your website because in some cases it doesn't make sense to have all of that front and center on your website because with these lead autoresponders, if you're using an automated tool like Dubsado, you can actually segment it based on the type of inquiry that they are. So if you're a freelance copywriter like me and somebody is coming to you for a website copywriting project, you can send them information specific to that project versus if somebody is coming to me to join my mastermind for other freelancers and personal brands and marketers, they're going to receive different information in that lead autoresponder. So overall, it makes it on brand, it makes it easy, you don't have to reply right away personally, and it continues that buying journey. The next must have in your onboarding workflow is a discovery call scheduler. You can choose whether this is automated or not, but regardless, it makes it so much easier than the back and forth, especially when you run an online business like I do and trying to figure out time zones and coordinating busy schedules. Having a discovery call scheduler is going to save you a ton of space. I don't really need to get into this one too much. It's very simple. The next must have in your onboarding checklist is a proposal template. And I would actually recommend having a proposal template for all of the different types of projects that you do. For example, from my own business, the proposal that you are going to receive if you are coming to me for a website copy project or a intensive day reservation or as somebody who wants to join the Inner Circle Mastermind is going to be similar, like there's a similar structure to them, but the proposals themselves are different obviously because they're selling very different services. So do yourself a favor and create at least one proposal template, if not ones that match with the different categories of services that you're offering so that not only can you save time when it's time to actually send a proposal to a lead, but if you set this up right, then you'll likely start booking more and increasing that proposal close rate because they'll be set up strategically to close leads for these specific offers. And when your proposals look really nice, it makes the client on the other side feel really good and confident in their decision to book with you. So it's again, a win-win for everyone. I also like to pair my proposal template with the next onboarding must have, which is your contract or your service agreement and have it all in one place for the client so that this is like a really simple step for them. Like we wanna make it easy for them to say yes to you, sign the contract and pay their first invoice. I'm actually going to group in the next must have here, which is your invoice or your fee schedule and having all of that in one place 
through one link even if possible is going to make the process a lot easier for you as the person who's sending the proposal agreement and the invoice and the person who is on the other receiving end of it. So when they read your proposal and they see how excited they are, they can just go ahead and book themselves into your calendar by signing the agreement and paying that deposit on the invoice. Maybe I'm really nitpicky, but when I'm hiring other people and I am getting multiple emails through the onboarding process, that's like a proposal comes in and then I say yes to this, but then they need to send the invoice and then they need to send the contract and it all just comes in messy at different times. I'm gonna take longer to actually deal with these pieces because all of this is like more work for me. And the easier you can make it for your clients, the easier you will make it for yourself. So. Overall, try to make it so that they don't have to work really hard in order to just sign on with you. Make this easy for them. The next must have in your onboarding checklist is some kind of automated confirmation that they completed all of those steps prior successfully. So I'm talking about like a welcome email, even if it's not like they're getting access to a full client portal like they would if you were using something like Dubsado, you still wanna send something that's like, hey, don't worry, we received your confirmation, we have your contract and we have your invoice, everything is ready to go, we're gonna follow up with you with next steps in onboarding. If you can, based on the tech tools that you choose to use, which if you use Dubsado like I do, then you will be able to do this, it's even better if you can put all of these steps into, again, one email. Just like my recommendation for the proposal, contract, and invoice, you can add in all of your welcome email, welcome information, package, whatever you wanna call it, into that same spot so that when they sign everything, it's all very easy for them. Again, minimizing the homework for them, minimizing the emails in their inbox. And I know that coming from me, this might be funny because if you've ever worked with me before, you know that I like to assign a lot of homework, but that homework is stuff that you should be doing in your business in order to make impactful changes, not just like busy work through multiple emails. I try to keep it all condensed in one spot and just really easy for you and clear of what your next steps are. So at the very least, your welcome email or your confirmation email is just a yes, you did this correctly and we'll be in touch. But even better is if you can include it with the onboarding process for them becoming a new client. And a little side note about these confirmation emails and that kind of thing, if you're not sure of what to put into these emails, or if you sit down to write them and you're feeling totally stuck, I actually have a template pack for you if you wanna check out the canned email templates. I will leave those linked below. It has all of the canned emails from my own processes, plus so many more that are good for all types of freelancers, not just copywriters. So I'll leave more information about that linked below. But back to your welcome email and your onboarding checklist. Another must have is a onboarding questionnaire or some kind of intake form so that you can get to know your clients. This is so important to send prior to your kickoff call because it will first help your client get in the right headspace of working with you and start to understand the types of questions that you're going to have for them. And second, help you do your homework. There is nothing that is more of a time waster than showing up to a meeting unprepared. So you don't really know a lot about who you're talking to, or you don't really know what they want from you or what their goals are for the project or anything like that. That's gonna be a big waste of time for everyone. You're gonna be on Zoom much longer than needed. So if you have a strategic onboarding questionnaire, you're gonna save everybody time, you're gonna make it easier, and you're gonna to start to set the stage of what it's like to really work with you. A lot of my done for you copywriting clients actually call me First Draft Jill, which I do not take lightly. It is a title that I am honored to have, but I don't think it is just to do with how I write copy for clients. I think that part of the reason why clients love their first draft so much when they work with me is that they are supported through the entire process. So the questions that I'm asking in their onboarding questionnaire are setting the stage for me to deliver as promised when we get to the actual copywriting. And this is true for other types of deliverables or for my coaching clients in the mastermind. While I'm not writing copy for them, the questions that I'm asking them when they're first getting started with me are things that are gonna set the stage for our entire time together. And it helps them to start to shift their perspective so that they can see what it is that I'm looking for and how they can get the most out of our time together. So a really good onboarding questionnaire, as you can see, is very important here. I'm gonna stop rambling about this because I could do an entire video about these, 
but you need to have one in your onboarding workflow. And the final must have in your onboarding checklist as a freelancer, as a copywriter, as a personal brand, anyone who works in the service industry like I do is some kind of internal onboarding process. Everything we've talked about so far will save your clients time, make it easy for them, make it feel good for them. It'll also save you time if it's semi-automated. But to take it one step further, you need to pay attention to what happens after you book that lead. What steps are involved? At the very least, write these down so that you have a process to follow, but even better is if you can start to automate those pieces as well. For my business, this has looked different over the years. At first, I was using just Dubsado, and Dubsado would send me different reminders, and maybe I was keeping track of the steps of a project in my written notebook. As I started to really pay attention to tech tools and how I can automate things, I started to use ClickUp and that was setting the stage to hire a team and get some more help. So then I was able to automate parts of that onboarding process and no longer was I keeping track of projects in my notebook, but using ClickUp. One step further than that was actually automating pieces so that when a new client booked through Dubsado, then Dubsado could talk to Zapier, could talk to ClickUp, get them set up with a new project on our internal project management software. It could get them set up with client folders in our Google Drive. It's this whole robust system and it's amazing. And more recently, I shifted all of that over to Notion. So the same thing can happen inside Notion, which I'm loving a lot better. It just works for my brain a lot better. I have done videos about this elsewhere, which I can leave those linked for you too, but basically just choosing what that process is and knowing that it can change as your business grows and evolves. Business is always going to be an evolution and things are going to break. That means that you're growing and that's a good thing, but you still need to take the time to set these things up for the current stage of business that you're in. And it will help you save so much time in the long run. So basically your internal onboarding process is knowing what comes next after that lead books and even better if you can at least semi-automate this step. Okay, I know this video was a bit of a rapid fire talking at you about things that you can implement in your business, but these are things you can implement relatively easily and they'll make a huge impact. By implementing these steps and making these changes, then you will make a difference in how your business operates on the day to day. And then that will let you generate more revenue because instead of doing all this busy work, you'll be able to go out and get more better clients. And if you're not wasting time on all of the busy work and all these little pieces, and you can also automate your sales pipeline and all of that, then you will start to increase your take home income. Because instead of wasting time trying to do all of these things manually or haphazardly and just not having anything that is like resembling a process at the very least in place, it will be easier and you can focus on the things that matter more. Processes like this are things that I have honed in my own business over the years. They're the reason why I'm able to run my business in part-time hours right now. And they are things that we cover inside my mastermind with my mastermind clients, both one-on-one -on -one and as a community. The overall goal is to help you streamline and make things more efficient and stop hustling so much so that you can start living more. And for a lot of us, having the work-life balance or the work-life integration that we want requires us creating more revenue in fewer hours, but in a legitimate and aligned way, not in like a scammy, kind of way that you would see all over Instagram these days. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, then I will also leave the information for the Inner Circle Mastermind linked below. And if you have any questions about this conversation, I am happy to answer those for you if you wanna leave those in the comments below. Or if you want me to dig in deeper to any of these steps, I'm happy to do that in a future video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will chat with you soon.